Dzień dobry, dobry wieczór. Witamy serdecznie na naszym spotkaniu z okazji wydania w Polsce książki Jorga Mangolda przez wydawnictwo Co ja na to. Bardzo serdecznie witam wszystkich Państwa, którzy jesteście tutaj z nami, ale tych też, którzy będą, wiemy, oglądali potem nagranie, bo o nie, o nie pytali. Witam przede wszystkim naszego dzisiaj głównego gościa, Jorga Mangolda, ale również Magdę Macińską, która będzie nas dzisiaj wspierała i tłumaczyła. Magdę Stonawską, która tutaj sprawia, że to spotkanie w ogóle technicznie może się odbyć. Krysię Boroń-Krupińską z Mindfulness Association. Ja nazywam się Weronika Chmielewska i jestem z Fundacji EduMind Uważność w edukacji. Spotykamy się z okazji promocji książki. My rodzice jesteśmy tylko ludźmi. Jork, czy mógłbyś powiedzieć kilka słów o tym, jak to się stało, że tę książkę napisałeś? Jakie twoje doświadczenia zawodowe, osobiste sprowadziły cię do takiego pomysłu i tego, że możemy teraz ją również czytać w Polsce? Well, I think it's like a thread of three um working with families for 30 and more years in my profession as psychotherapist and psychiatrist specialized on adolescents and families that was one threat and the second one was the mindfulness part in my own teaching and and, and becoming teacher of self-compassion and also running into a parenting program from a colleague from the Netherlands and saying, well, that would be helpful for working with parents rather than these strict training type things. And I think the third thread is um, being a father of four in a patchwork family and having had some of our ups and downs in, in regular life, which you also find some self-disclosures in, in the book about my daughters mainly. So, and, and the point was in my field in Germany, my country, um, with families and adolescents or children, mindfulness is not so strong. Yeah, it is strong in psychotherapy with adults. And so I figured, well, with these three threads, I might have something to say. And that's why I wrote the book. Kolejnym pytaniem, które chcielibyśmy zadać, to jakbyś mógł się odnieść tak naprawdę, co uważność i współczucie wniosły do tej twojej pracy jako psychiatra, do, do tej praktyki? Well, I would say a lot more of mildness and or softness and maybe being a bit more in resonance with the families and patients um, because maybe in the psychiatry, psychotherapy field, we're looking for solutions and also wanting to have improvements in behavior or in whatever stresses the family. And I think mindfulness bring and, and self-compassion brings in a lot softer gaze of, it doesn't have all to be worked out in perfect solutions, but rather um, what's helpful for survival with a big open heart in a family. I feel non-volunteeringly, yeah, just with a good intent, but sometimes we increase that optimizing pressure uh, by trying to help. And I think mindfulness and self-compassion brought in a really new perspective for that in my psychiatry work. I mogę zadać kolejne pytanie bezpośrednio związane z książką, bo jak czytam my rodzice jesteśmy tylko ludźmi, to przyznam, że czuję ulgę. I dlaczego to jest takie ważne, żeby właśnie w roli rodzica pamiętać o tym, że jesteśmy tylko ludźmi? Well, I think in the parent role we usually want to do our very best 
and it might end up in the intention that we actually need to be super dad and super mom alongside with superman and superwoman and super free time person. Um, and to accept that we have limited power, limited concentration, and sometimes just being human, which also means to be at the end of my capacity or to be different from what I want to be in my ideal role as a parent is very important. And to be human is the main gift for the kids. I have the real example at home right now, because since one and a half years, I'm grandfather. And um, the grandchild Tilda from my daughter Leah. And I sometimes have the feeling I need to recommend a book from some guy who wrote that for parents because she is so engaged and so wanting to be so good in all her mothering that she also brings herself into stress. And then once she's stressed out, then, then, then it's harder to be that good mother that she wants to be. Zainspirowana tym pytaniem Kasi, też mam książkę przed sobą i wychodząc od pierwszego słowa pod tytułu Samo współczucie. Czy mógłbyś powiedzieć, część osób tutaj na pewno wie, bo widzę, ale dla części to może być zupełnie nowe pojęcie. Czym jest samo współczucie i dlaczego akurat ono jest ważne dla rodziców? Well, in the book or in the program associated with, I think it's a very important, crucial part. Because we somehow have tools with mindfulness to maybe reduce some of the stress reactions we have. But then it's not implying that with mindfulness we can sail easily through parenting, because that's simply not possible. And we always will run into situation where we are not happy about ourselves or where life is stressful or where we are at the end of our capacities. And self-compassion means to then, in times that have a bit of hardship, be a good friend of ourselves. And I think self-criticism is strong in in parenting when you are an engaged mother or engaged father then you easily go into heavy self-criticism and you always could have done better and we could make the point with a little experiment if you want to um, just very shortly um, like everybody here in that round who who is in parenting might remember a situation where something went other than you wanted it and you were not happy how you reacted as a mother and father. And you might just remember a little bit how do you address yourself when you're not content or when you feel insufficient. And then you might think of a good friend of yours or your best friend being a mother or father And she or she comes and says, well, that was awful. And I was not happy with my parenting. And it was a very bad situation. And how would you address your best friend? Would you go with the same criticism as you might have done to yourself? Or would you be more compassionate and find ways of trying to To, to reduce the suffering and to show that, yeah, they are human. Because that's the kind of one-line definition of self-compassion in there. Um, when it's hardship or suffering or stress, to then act to yourself like you would to a loved person or a good friend. So self-compassion is something, self-friendliness in hard times, and it's also an antidote to optimizing pressure. Gdy wspomniałeś, Jork, o, o takich pułapkach różnych, które wpadają rodzice, może mógłbyś powiedzieć coś więcej na temat 
twojej pracy i doświadczenia, które jest związane z rodzicami, z opiekunami, co dla nich jest największym wyzwaniem współcześnie, wyzwaniem, trudnością? Well, I think a challenge is just parenting, but also a great joy. So it does have both. But when we say about like mental challenges or mental traps, I would say nowadays it's so high expectations on ourselves to do everything on a very high level high level quality parenting high level on the job besides as a working mother or working dad and then please high level free time um, so i think it's the challenge of so high demands on ourselves also all the nice pictures on social media everybody is doing all this nice stuff and We don't show pictures of walking three hours in the night with your baby who is crying and has a fever. Um, I think that's a big challenge that you want to be so super good and lose track of that human part of open heart parenting. And I think a challenge is that we know more and learned about childhood, about growing up about rights of children and so with all this knowledge that is good for kids that they are more respected as personalities but it didn't make parenting easier and if you then take all the broad range of guiding books then it's getting even more confusing of how to do it right tak, jakoś jestem przy tych wyzwaniach, wyzwaniach rodzicielskich, ale książka tak naprawdę rozszerza treści, które można przejść w trakcie kursu, dziesięciotygodniowego kursu, którego Jork jesteś autorem, Rodzicielstwo z uważnością i współczuciem. I co myślę jest bardzo interesujące, ten kurs jest refundowany w Niemczech jako działanie zapobiegające wypaleniu rodzicielskiemu. To jest termin, który dopiero jakoś zaczyna sobie torować drogę do świadomości takiej w Polsce. Mamy wyniki pierwszych badań, zaczynamy o tym wypaleniu rodzicielskim rozmawiać. Jestem ciekawa, dlaczego właśnie w Niemczech uznano, że też te środki państwowe można przekierować na wspieranie rodziców właśnie bazując na uważności i samowspółczuciu. Well, I would be happy if it's a really parenting address policy it's more um, out of the health insurance system where there is a reimbursement and for in germany what we do have is that our health insurances have the obligation to spend a certain amount of their budget on preventive measures not only for treatments but also for preventing illness And one field of this prevention that is supported is stress management. And so what our course is as other stress uh, reduction or stress management courses as well. Um, so it's eligible for the re reimbursement for that. And so it's not really focusing the state on parents, but, but it's a focus on prevention. Of stress measures. Jeśli mowa o radzeniu sobie ze stresem i zarządzaniu, bo to w kontekście uważności często to pojęcie się pojawia, jak sobie radzimy ze stresem, ale też gdybyś Jork mógł powiedzieć, co takiego jest szczególnego w programie kursu, który stworzyłeś, co odróżnia od pozostałych podejść obecnych na rynku? I would say mindful, compassionate parenting One thing that is rather unique is my personal drive for three pillars in mindfulness. Not only mindfulness and mainly stress reduction, but added on the second pillar, self-compassion. And I'm a strong advocate for the third pillar, positive, cultivating the positive. So with these three pillars, I think that's truly not the usual setup. 
And most of the courses cover one of these three, but do not combine it. So that is one general thing. And with that, there is also a non-parenting regular people, mindful, positive living format out. And the second unique thing then is that it's addressing parents and it's bringing a parent group together. So all this sharing and common humanity is addressing the role of rearing up children. And that's different from a normal uh, stress reduction course where you deal more with workplace stress or other topics. And I think in mindfulness terms, what is also rather special is to say, well, parents have lots of things to do. So they usually are not the people who can sit down with 45 minutes of meditation per day as a regular um, homework out of the mindfulness course. And I was very strong in no guilty conscience through my course format on parents. Yeah, They have that enough just by themselves. And it should be helpful and rather realistic addressing what can be small items. But if you have time, take it as a gift yeah, to go into deeper. So that's also different from other mindfulness courses that I know. And I would make one point what's different to other parent training courses. I don't know how usually broadly you have them in your country but we do have several formats of training for parents and they usually are rather cognitive behavioral and give a lot of advice of how to do it right. And I think there is a difference of mindful, compassionate parenting saying, I don't know how you do it right, but I want to help that you find out how you want to do parenting. And I think that's a big difference. Cieszę się, że pojawił się właśnie ten wątek radzenia rodzicom i kursów, które dają jakby gotowe strategie, bo chciałam Ciebie zapytać z tak wieloletnim doświadczeniem, jak zachęciłbyś sceptycznych rodziców do udziału w takim kursie, zarówno tych rodziców, którzy jakby nie, nie wierzą, że rodzicom w ogóle są potrzebne kursy, że po prostu rodzicem się jest, Albo też takim rodzicom, którzy właśnie odbyli już wiele kursów, usłyszeli wiele strategii i to jakoś nie działa w ich domu. Czy, czy jest coś, czym zachęciłbyś do właśnie uczestniczenia w tym programie? Well, I think it's easier to answer on the later part and say, well, I could say what's the idea behind this course. Yeah? And I also have to warn them, you will not get a handbook of how to parent. Um, you will have chances to reflect with others on what are the stressful parts and what are your own patterns to, to react. And you would need to be interested in, in, in doing this inner work, but you will also be encouraged to see that others are just in, sitting in the same boat and you find common humanity together. Um, and it's for self-care and for yeah, self-compassion. That would, would be the offer. And then it needs to be an interest in this rather than convincing them that this is the only right way to be in this course. So that's why I didn't answer the first question, I wouldn't want to encourage and draw in people who have no interest. Um, so it's, it's a free will interest driven thing to do mindfulness. And maybe with one line, I would say, uh, it will definitely not take away the stress when your baby becomes, uh, gets teeth, not become, but gets teeth. Um, it will not take away the stress when they first try their own will with uh, saying no. And it will not take away the stress uh, of your puberty kids. But I'm convinced that it will be helpful for you to go along with these um, demands and to be more 
inside yourself with your own heart and more friendly with yourself uh, in all these times of special demands in parenting. Jeśli już pojawiają się rodzice na kursie, a pojawiają się rodzice na kursie, to co mówią ci, którzy go ukończyli? Jak ta nabyta wiedza i doświadczenie, które płynie z praktyk, wpłynęło, wpływa na ich życie, ale nie tylko ich życie, ale też życie ich rodziny, gdy byś mógł o tym coś powiedzieć? We would need lots of testimonials, because it's also very individual, obviously. But I know that there are several takeaways that often are reported. Yeah? So um, a breathing space with taking several breaths before acting out in a conflict with your kid is a huge takeaway that parents report and say, that helped me, that I will take a pause before I act out. Um, We have a content explaining our evolutionary old dinosaur brain, and that's a takeaway to say, yes, learning more about my dinosaur brain, and when I am in dinosaur mode, and when my kid is in there, that was a takeaway that I can refer to with my kids, and then take it back afterwards and say, hey, now I'm in my regular mind again, let's look at it again. I would say the self-compassion center part is a takeaway and say, um, I learned to be more friendly with myself when I'm not the parent I want to be. And that does not mean that I don't care anymore. It's just that I don't beat myself up rather than find new ways of supporting myself with a friendly voice, like I would my best friend as a mother. And not at last to say, um, hey, I learned to look more on the positive things that are actually happening constantly, rather than looking on all what does not work. And there is a lot that works. Um, alongside with taking again joy as a big thing to look for and to enhance in my family lives rather than to-do lists of right and wrong. Um, so I'm happy when in the end someone can say, well, it's still sometimes rough water to sail, but I'm somehow more confident and a bit more relaxed that I actually am an okay sailor as a mother or father in that water. To pozostańmy jeszcze przy, przy pytaniach, bo za chwilkę zacznie się taka część, gdzie zaprosimy uczestników do tego, żeby, żeby je zadawali. Ale jeszcze zanim to się stanie, jakbyś, Jork, mógł powiedzieć o planach, które masz, o planach um, rozwojowych, szkoleniowych, wydawniczych, nauczycielskich um, w najbliższych miesiącach, czy też w najbliższym roku. Hmm. Right now I'm so much into constructing our new place to live that uh, I could more easily talk about uh, laying tiles on the floor and uh, constructing wood sculptures and what so on. But, <laughs> but it's actually one plan to, to really live part of what we are teaching there in a new setting where actually my daughter, granddaughter, the other daughter, animals will be alongside with my wife so so that is a true answer yeah in terms of that that it's not theoretical but we just started this uh generation project as a as a family so in terms of projects here with mindfulness or and or parenting or self-compassion um I'm, i'm teaching regular courses in parenting but also in mindful self-compassion, MSC. Um, one project is what I told already to say mindful positive living as a course for not parents, for regular people, but also on these three pillars of mindfulness, self-compassion, positive living. That That's out and I'm teaching that. So sometimes in the back of the mind, there is a publishing idea of again doing something for beyond parenting everybody with these three topics and how to be compassionate with our planet. 
but it may take a while because first we have to do a big garden and then we have to <laughs> learn how to make our own hay for the horses. And <laughs> so I think the writer's publishing desk is not really close yet. In mindfulness, I, I well designed or constructed a training for mindfulness teachers, again, on these three pillars. We call it clinical trainer for mindfulness, self-compassion, and positivity. So that's a 25-day training that we do with, with a focus on people who work with people who also might have psychiatric or other psychological topics alongside in a clinical or counseling setting. So that's a big project um, where we have one teacher training already done and now are uh, hopefully running on the second term of that training. And on the parenting, it's it's a slow progress, but very, maybe it isn't all that slow. I mean, it was fascinating to do a teacher training in your country with Christina and uh, Veronica um, as super teacher trainer uh, alongside. And we have a PhD research going on in Istanbul in Turkey on the program. And uh, Peter and Paola, Christina, you know the two teacher trainers from our training, yeah? They have an interesting course right now with 20 uh, parents and parent counselors from Vietnam uh, running who are very interested in getting more training. So there are perspective to learn more about parenting in different parts of the world, which I find exciting, what is the same and what might be different. And I need some time to enjoy the growing up of my granddaughter. And hopefully when everything goes right, another grandchild, we don't know what gender in April next year. And it's so cool to be grandparent rather than parent. It's so much easier and, and you can see so much more of what they do, but it's also easy to hand them back when it's not working out and they need only mama can be the person who is. So I wish every mother and father to uh, sometimes slip into a grandparent hat and, and look with these eyes because it's yeah it, it's so much easier <laughs> you have that in the book but now it's real <laughs> wspaniale jest słyszeć o tym jak integrujesz uważność i współczucie w swoim życiu osobistym i też zawodowym i tutaj mogę zdradzić podekscytowana że w przyszłym roku też będziesz we współpracy z Mindfulness Association Polska prowadził szkolenie dla nauczycieli właśnie programu dla rodziców rodzicielstwa z uważnością i I'm happy and looking forward, especially if we work it out as a as a in-person program up in your wonderful country rather than on Zoom, yeah, which I will be looking forward to if that works out. Mamy nadzieję. Pracujemy nad tym. Bardzo dziękuję za wszystkie odpowiedzi tutaj na przygotowane przez nas pytania i teraz czas zacząć turę pytań od uczestników, od uczestniczek. To może prze, przeczytam pytanie, które się pojawiło na czacie, a jeżeli jeszcze pojawią się jakieś, to oczywiście wrócimy. Więc przeczytam całe po prostu tutaj pytanie, wiadomość. Wiadomo z badań, że fizyczny kontakt w postaci przytulenia trwający około 20 sekund, wywiera terapeutyczny wpływ na ciało i umysł. Wytwarza się oksytocyna, a wraz z nią poczucie bezpieczeństwa, łagodzenie lęku, wzrost odporności na infekcje itp. Czy znane są lub badany jest wpływ samowspółczucia, uważności na fizyczny aspekt funkcjonowania w roli rodzica? What we know is more a lot about the personal well-being if we take the studies on self-compassion and they are less centered on the specific parent role, most of them that I know. <clears throat> There are some out that show that the self-compassion part in a mindfulness court when it integrated is an important part for 
having the resonance with the children or the adolescent. There was a Spanish, I think, study out that showed that the higher the self-compassion rate of the parents are, the more um, efficacy or the more is happening on the side of the adolescents with them not being part of the course, but just the parents doing the training. And there seemed to be a correlation that the self-compassion part, even more than the mindfulness part, uh, was the one that made the difference in how some changes, resonance, or um, relational issues were improved. That is like one study that I know that was more specific on parenting and and a bit more i think is out for rather mindfulness and parenting um, showing that it is helping to deal with stress that it is helping to deal with the interpersonal field in the family um, also helping on relational issues in the family because you asked the question about the hugging and the oxytocin, I mean, the self-compassion is trying to bring that in for ourselves. We do a lot of gestures um, inducing kind of a hugging of ourselves. And in parenting, we're hugging our kids a lot, also inducing oxytocin, but doing that for ourselves as ourselves seems helpful for parenting. So in parenting, we sometimes have the tendency to forget ourselves because we're all handing it out to the others. Mamy jeszcze jedno pytanie na czacie, które dotyczy co prawda szkoleń w Polsce, przeczytam je, czy w Polsce można wziąć udział w szkoleniu na temat wypalenia rodzicielskiego? Jeśli tak, to gdzie i na jakich warunkach? To może do tego odniosę się później, ale być może tak Pytanie możemy przekierować do Jorga, jak ta, e, taka możliwość wygląda w Niemczech. E, czy on może coś powiedzieć na ten temat? Szkolenia dedykowane wypalaniu rodzicielskiego. I need to understand better training in the area of uh, parental burnout. Well, the, the main studies that I know are, are from the Belgium lady um, who, who died, did quite some on and showing the, the phenomenon of parental burnout. Um, well, in, in, in my mindset, I wouldn't want to do a specific parental burnout trainings. It's, again, it's, I'm so happy not to be in main treatment anymore, but trying to invest energy in, in preventive work. So with that, I would say mindful, compassionate parenting is a preventive work and measure and an offer for not running into parental burnout. If you are trained in mindfulness and if you're self-compassionate and keep your plans on positivity, then I think it, unless you have three very disabled children, um, are freshly divorced and living in a flat, with uh, 25 uh, square meters, <clears throat> um, then, then you at least have some resilience to deal with all of it. And I think what we can do with this approach of mindfulness, self-compassion is on that personal mental level to be preventive. And, and But we also need to point out that there are also social measures needed, yeah? like measures against poverty, like um, good care, taking places for children and so on, supporting single parents. Um, there, there are measures beyond what you can do on a, on a mental level yeah, to deal with all of it. So there also needs to be real, actual social help sometimes. So, Christina, with that, I don't know whether I did really grasp the question correctly. Bardzo dziękuję. Jesteśmy całym sercem przy programie kursu stworzonego przez Jorga i tym bardziej jesteśmy szczęśliwe, że możemy popularyzować tutaj ten program. W międzyczasie skomunikowałyśmy się z Weroniką, by sprawdzić takie możliwości szkoleń stricte związanych z wypaleniem rodzicielskim. Nie są nam one znane. 
Tym samym program Jorga trafił do nas jako do mam, jako do rodziców całym sercem w 100% i w pełni, więc tym chętniej możemy się dzielić tym doświadczeniem i też odnosząc się do tych informacji, które się pojawiły w linkach. Tak jak Krysia powiedziała, tych szkoleń nie znamy, ale wiemy, że można poszukać już polskich też badań na temat wypaleń rodzicielskich. Na przykład SWPS będzie pewnie coś świeżego publikował, jeżeli ten temat tutaj jest interesujący. I mamy jeszcze jedno pytanie, aż mi się ciepło na sercu zrobiło, ale pozwolę, żeby Jork odpowiedział. Czy taki kurs mogą jeszcze przejść rodzice dorosłych dzieci? Tym bardziej, że nadal mieszka się z jednym z dzieci <śmiech> przepraszam, i popełnia się błędy, za które człowiek się katuje, a zdrowie ma się tylko jedno. Well, with the course, when, when I offer the course, I don't have um, prerequisite. We also had a grandmother in the course sometimes, or um, as long as it's clear that you're, that you will be sitting mainly with parents, at least in my country, in my region, with kids in the age group of three, four, five, and then also with 10, 12, 13, less with puberty kids, but sometimes, or one or two in the course. So I would feel fine if somebody comes in because they have plenty of experience looking back uh, for all exercises and all all the patterns that happen yeah but i would want to make clear yeah um most likely you will have everyday uh, situations shared in different age groups then and i would say self compassion would be really helpful um for the fact of tormenting yourself yeah or against that as an antidote yeah i would not want to promise that it's easily solved but um that it might take less long and be less intense when you try to remind yourself hey i wanted to be more friendly with myself yeah? Yeah. but maybe your country is the country where a new development made like um, help for people with adult children and torments about what you do wrong or right. What we do have is like a focus um, we call mindful compassionate education um, where the format is changed to be adapted for professional caretakers and educators who are not the biological parents of the kids but who are in that role. And there is some interest in, in mindful, compassionate care if you're a caretaker in other circumstances. So maybe Poland with the experts uh, up front who have lots of experience could be the one for with adult children or what I see as a big field is also for how do I care for my parents when they grow old and what pressure does it take and where do I torment myself and do I have self-compassion with that and uh, may I be human as the daughter who is taking care of the parents um, could be a new field. A mamy jeszcze jedno pytanie, które tak zatacza koło i wraca tutaj bezpośrednio do doświadczenia Jorga. Z wypowiedzi wynika, że jest Pan osobą aktywną w wielu sferach życia. Jaką technikę Pan dedykuje, być może tutaj w moim domniemaniu poleca, żeby nie sfokusować się tylko na jednej, tak żeby czerpać z życia to co najlepsze, nie być tylko biorcą, ale i dawcą. Życzę wielu sukcesów osobistych i zawodowych. I guess the most helpful, and I wouldn't call it technique, um, the most helpful point was um, running in my then-to-be then wife and joining up with her um, because or despite already having two children uh, as, stu as medical students, we both were, And I think um, joining up with that rather than following that great career path was the main gift in my life, yeah, in terms of 
showing that human bonding and relation is helpful, important, joyful, but sometimes dreadful. Um, and joyful enough, we can do the mindfulness path together since almost 20 years. Um, so that is helpful. And in terms of meditation, I was drawn into, I mean, after looking in different um, schools of meditating mindfulness and a little bit of Zen and mindfulness, I was strongly drawn into the heartwarming, friendly paths of compassion, self-compassion, maybe because I need it, yeah? maybe because I was not so compassionate with myself <laughs> plenty of time and rather pushing. So that was helpful to be less pushy and less um, criticizing myself, and, which is not always working out being on my construction spot right now, I have to admit. Yeah? Then I still want to do a rather perfect tile pattern and not just so. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know whether that was the reference of technique in terms of the meditation or mindful practice. And the main motor is when I'm enthusiastic, then that's actually really a lot of power there. And I'm happy with that. And I was a, I started as a very, and I still am, but started as an enthusiastic father who said, I want to do fathering. And I stayed at home for a year with my first daughter, my first biological daughter yeah, um, out of our four. Um, so I remember that very well. And I said, I do not want to do this office job like my father had and be only home for, for meals. I want to be part of it. And we always did half-time work, one or the other, my wife and me, and shared parenting. Mm. Szanowni Państwo, no to zbliżamy się, myślę, już teraz do końca tego, tego spotkania. Jestem teraz z taką refleksją i właściwie przyszedł mi do głowy cytat Mai Angelu, że jesteśmy wszyscy bardziej podobni niż niepodobni do siebie. Jak słucham o doświadczeniach Jorga z pracy z rodzicami niemieckimi, to, to nasi rodzice w Polsce borykają się z bardzo podobnymi sprawami. I tak jak dotknęliśmy też tych trudnych obszarów, to chciałabym zakończyć, tak jak kurs Jorga kończy się tym właśnie tymi pozytywnymi aspektami, że są takie ścieżki, są takie narzędzia. Mamy już po polsku, dzięki wydawnictwu Co ja na to, naprawdę tą mądrą książkę dla rodziców. Mamy kurs, więc wiem, że słuchają nas rodzice, ale też specjaliści, więc zachęcamy do tej wspólnej pracy też promowania. No i to na dzisiaj myślę, że, że wszystko. Bardzo serdecznie dziękuję Jorgowi za jego czas, zwłaszcza w takim trudnym okresie, w jakim teraz się znajduje wyzwań budowlanych i innych. Bardzo dziękuję Magdzie, że wspierała nas tutaj tak świetnie z tłumaczeniem. Drugiej Magdzie Stonawskiej, która czuwała, żeby tutaj wszystko się odbywało zgodnie z planem. Krysiu, bardzo Tobie dziękuję, że mogłyśmy razem to poprowadzić. Wszystkim Państwu, którzy byliście tutaj z nami, którzy wybraliście w tak zajętym w świecie właśnie, żeby z nami spędzić ten, ten czas, ten z, państwu, z Państwa, którzy będziecie nas oglądać. No i też wielkie podziękowania dla Blanki Łyszkowskiej, której nie mogło dzisiaj być z nami, ale która była przecież główną pomysłodawczynią i wydawczynią książki Jorga. Dziękujemy bardzo i do zobaczenia. Dziękujemy. Dziękujemy. Ah, well and and i want to show a lot of gratitude for all what you did in your work and i was truly amazed how quick and fast the engaged group brought together a translation before our teacher training and and really the publishing of a book um so it's wonderful and it's not mainly about me it's supposed to be helpful for parents and and i also want to say that with all the engagement of the mindfulness association Well, you definitely have your true, heartful, true experts sitting here. The, the ones that I know, there might be a lot more, but I know Christina and Veronica from the teacher training, but also from doing a teacher training together. So they're the best people to address with all the questions and all the relations on this approach. A closing note, because right now I will be uh, 
going to an association meeting where I'm chair, and we are helping for education in Nepal. And sometimes it's helpful. We started that in my office um, to, to looking beyond that all what is pressuring us in our societies where we have the, the permission to live in. Yeah, it's sometimes very different how families and children and parents have to live in different countries. So I think that's also a closing note that it's good to look beyond and say, hey, it's, it's uh, uh, I'm missing the right word, but it's, it's a gift that we have so many choices and possibilities and, and uh, a rather safe surrounding in our country. So we need to work on keeping that but also it's good to look beyond and say there are different places in the world where they need more base, more down-to-earth help first yeah, before they can have parental stress, although they have it in their hut in Nepal, in the mountains, just as well. I have gratitude in the program, and sometimes I think it's good to be grateful for the privileges we have. And I think that Compassion and mindfulness can be a contribution to spread that in the world and maybe heal some of it or be a healer for some of the craziness of what our modern societies also bring up. So thanks to everybody bringing that in the world. I'm touched. Bardzo dziękujemy wszystkim obecnym z nadzieją, że do zobaczenia wkrótce. Dziękujemy bardzo. 